was my manager. She trusted him with her life savings. He said, each paycheck, you will have to give in $100. But was she scammed by the boss? I never got my money. Who are you, ma'am? How you doing? Tell me, ask me how I'm doing. Where's her money? I told them, the money, I do not owe her anything. Judge Judy. She went to tell everybody on my job that I was a dear for not mistaken. You Sandoval versus Alvarez. Parties have been sworn in. You may be seated. Sir, have a seat. How old are you? I'm 21. And you were working at the same place where Mr. Alvarez was working. What do you do for a living? Uh, I was a server. First I started as a hostess and I ended up as a server. And what about Mr. Alvarez? He was my manager. Now, you decided to join an employee program, but not an official program, for mm -hmm. savings. Yeah. Tell me how it worked. Um, it's kind of like something to save money. The person in charge gets 10 people together. And um, Johan right here was the person in charge of it. He got 10 people to participate. Then after you get the 10 people to commit to it, you get numbers, you put them in a cup, everybody gets their number. Each paycheck, you will have to give in $100. The first time you put in the $100, number one gets $1,000. Next paycheck, everybody puts in another $100, number two gets their part of the money. I was number 11. I was the last number in it because I was planning to save my money for to purchase a car. So he was in it too? Yeah, he was number one. <laughs> he was number one? Yes. Did we all draw at the same time? Um, no, he said since he was a person in charge, he will receive his money first, and everybody else got a number. Actually, with me, I, I requested number 11, so I know that by the end of it, I would have my money, and I didn't have to go back and finish paying anybody. And how much money did you put in? $1,000. But you quit your job before you had actually accumulated a thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I actually quit when I was, I, I believe, in number three. But I also talked to him and I told him I will be responsible enough to bring the a thousand dollars every date that it was supposed to be. You mean a hundred dollars? Yeah, the hundred dollars. And did you do that? Yes, every time. Who did you give the money to when you came back each week? Okay, the next two numbers, he was there when I went to go drop off the money. Yes. So I gave them to him personally, and I asked, I asked him, since I don't work here anymore, for my safety, in case any problems happen, I would like you to sign my paper every time I give you the money. And did he do that? Yeah, he signed one through five all the times that I showed up that he was there. But after the fifth time, I believe he started getting weekends off, which was the days we were supposed to turn in the money. Was we got paid on Friday, so you would have two days after that to turn in your money, which was Saturday or Sunday. And then after that, I would go to the restaurant and just give it to the person personally because we had a list, and I knew exactly who was next and who was supposed to get the money, so I would go and give it personally to the person. Mm -hmm. But when it was my turn to give the money to, I talked to Johan and told him, when can I go pick up my money? And I never got my money, so I went on Well, Sunday. what did Mr. Alvarez say when you said, I want my money now? Oh, well, actually, this was his excuse. He told me, so my, you know what, I'm having problems with the money. So I told him, I understand problems happen. And he actually gave me his word that 100% that he was going to have it for the 29th. Which 29th was, of what month? April. Actually, I showed up on the 31st, two days after. And I asked him if he had my money. But he had called me already, which I didn't check my a voicemails, telling me he had a problem. So I was like, oh, man, we just... Well, what did he tell you the problem was this time? He claimed that he got pulled over by the cops and that he didn't know he had, a like, a restriction order, like, for his arrest because something had happened with his license or something and that they took him to into jail and he had to pay a bail out of $1,000, which he had to use my money to get out. So I said, that's not my problem. I need... How, who are you, ma'am? How you doing? Don't ask me how I'm doing. Okay. Um, to begin with... When we joined this um, saving, everybody was aware of it. That um, Don't tell me what everybody was aware of. Where's her money? I told them. Where's her money? The money, I do not owe her anything, okay? I told her, and I begin with, to everybody, whoever's going to quit the job is not going to receive the money. I'm not okay, going to be responsible. Just a second. For okay. He okay? Didn't. So, shh, please, don't speak. Now it's Mr. Alvarez's turn. So let me under take your hands off your hips. Okay. So let me understand. You say that you explained to everybody exactly. that what you say that you explained to everybody that if they quit the company, they lost their money. Is that what you say? Yes, ma'am. And Miss Sandoval 
was told that if she left the company, she would lose her money. Right. I would. Just, okay. That's what you. Right. Is that that's what, you what just I just told said. Yes. When did you leave the company? I think it, I don't have the exact date, but I believe it was after the third number. Actually, it was a day after New Year's. So the beginning of January 2005. Yeah. When had you started to put in your money? I started 11 26 or 4. Do you get paid every week or every two every weeks? Every two weeks. Every two weeks. So what we're talking about is the entire month of December, mm -hmm. which is when you would have put in your money. Yes. Minimally two, maybe three yeah, around there. times you contributed. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. Is that correct so far, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now let me see where you say he signed off on the money. Well, Mr. Alvarez, you gave her what amounts to a receipt for five payments. Yeah, exactly. I told her. Shut. Okay. Mr. Alvarez, let's recap what you just told me, sir. You told me that you explained to Miss Sandoval that if she left the company, she would lose her money. Right. She left the company after putting in three payments. Yes, we didn't know we had a I'm talk. speaking. Okay. But then you accepted two more payments from her after she left the company, sir. Yeah, because we had a talk. No, we didn't. Just a we second. Didn't. Well, now he's changing it, you see. Now he's changing it. And I tell you, now, did I finish? You didn't let me finish what I You finished enough, sir. Judge Judy continues in a moment. And later today... They were peeing on her mattress. We do not know that for sure. Listen to me, sir. You know why I know that for sure? Because I don't think she peed on her own mattress. Real cases, real people. Judge Judy. Salma Sandoval says... Former co-worker Johan Alvarez scammed her out of $1,000. Mr. Alvarez, are you trying to tell me that you never said to Miss Sandoval, because it's very easy for me to figure out, Good. and it's very easy for me to find out by picking up the phone and calling the police, that you never said to her, I got pulled over by the police, sure. and I needed $1,000 in bail. Yes, I did. Now, why in the world, Mr. Alvarez, would you tell her that you needed a thousand dollars bail if you didn't have her thousand dollars. I had the money with me, okay? No. Shut up! No, no, no! Now we're getting somewhere, madam. Go ahead. You had okay. the money I with had you. I had the money, and I told her when I did call her, I said I'm gonna set up a day with you so I can give you the money because I don't want nobody to Just come to my Just a minute. So now you acknowledge that she put in a thousand dollars to the savings plan? No, I not I not acknowledge it. She was giving the money to somebody else. I don't care who she was giving it to, sir. Well, she the was giving it to me. I don't care if she was giving it to you or not. The money was turned over to numbers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It was now her time. She has turned in the money so that everybody got paid in full $1,000. Now you've got the $1,000 and you get pulled I over by the police. I did have the $1,000 with me. I <laughs> no. told her that I was going to be he responsible to give the money did. so he could get he over did. with it. Because she was calling me on the phone and harassing me. She went to my job. She bring the boyfriend out there that she has. She bring him to did try to Did you use $1,000 for bail? No. Not did her you, money. It you, was my money. Just a second. It was no. my money. No, it wasn't. It you was got my your money. money already. No, it was my money. Okay, so... Mr. What? Alvarez. Yes, ma'am. She's telling me the truth, that you told her, I had your money, but I got into trouble, and I needed to use the $1,000 for bail. She didn't make that up, sir. Your Honor, I did have money on me. Okay, I did not have to use her money. The only thing was, she was coming to me, she was harassing me on my job. She went to uh, tell everybody on my job that I was a thief and I'm a student. You money. are. You took and her then, money. Then, <laughs> you are. You took her money. Ma'am. And then she went. She didn't stop. That She went to the president of the company to Good tell him. Good for you. Good for you. Exactly. Because he to told tell, me and then, that he was going to lend the And then the president of the company money. called me and said, get it over with. I don't want to hear it. And I'm telling you the same thing, my dear. And then I the first person who got paid this $1,000 was who? It was me. And the last person that's going to get paid this thousand dollars is her. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of a thousand dollars. That's all. Bobby's are excused. You may step out. I knew he was going to try to lie. He lied to me. 
more than five times. He went to try to intimidate me, I guess. I didn't threaten him. What I told him was he needed to cough up money. I feel like he didn't try to scam me, but he got caught up in a way where he wasted the money, had no way of paying me, so he had to find different excuses. And now the next case. All parties in the matter of Krill versus Sheets. Step forward, please. 19-year-old leasing agent Jennifer Krill is suing her ex-roommate, 21-year-old sales associate Christopher Sheets, for damage to their apartment and for his share of their security deposit. All right, Ms. Krill, let me see if I understand what this rental situation was about. You were doing some part-time work in the leasing office of an apartment complex. In exchange for that, instead of giving you a salary, they gave you an apartment. Correct. And you decided that you would supplement your income by bringing in a roommate, Mr. Sheets. Correct. Who I assume you knew from someplace. Yes. Right? Mutual Correct. friends. And he would pay you a small amount of like $100 a month. Plus $50 a month for utilities. And then he would pay the security deposit because there was a security deposit of $300. Yes. And he moved in. He said, that sounds like a great idea to me. He gave them a check for the security deposit. And then, according to you, there was a misunderstanding. Mr. Sheets says that he had heard that you were bad-mouthing him, whatever. He didn't want to live there anymore. He moves out. And it is your claim that the $300 check for the security deposit bounced, that he did some damage to the apartment and some damage to your personal property. Yes. Mr. Sheets does not address the bounce check, and yet he acknowledges that he caused some damage to the apartment. Correct. And says to take it out of the security deposit. Yeah. So, let's cut to the chase. Where did you get this $300 check for? At the time, my father and I had agreed that he would pay $300 for the security deposit. And you wrote a check. Correct. What happened with that check? My father and I have been disagreeing with each other lately, and then finally he said, I've had enough of it, and canceled the check. So what you're telling me is your father stopped payment on the, the check? The check had already been cashed, and I had been informed that by the leasing agent. My dad had reported stolen or forged. Because he forged Oh, just a second. Here we go. Now it gets more interesting, because yeah. this is the only interesting part so far in this case. Yeah. <laughs> your father reported the check stolen? Correct. And forged? Correct. So he wanted you arrested? Well, he didn't want that, but he wanted to get it settled. He didn't think that she forged the check. Yeah. Right. You forged the check. It wasn't, I didn't forge no, the check at the time. No, he said that you forged the check. <laughs> I had turned in a check in his name, correct. How did it end up that they no longer have $300 of the security deposit? They should still have it. When I called the apartment complex manager, I told her that I wanted my security deposit back. She Let me continued see, can I to see tell that, please? This she is continued the check to tell that me. Um, has stolen and forged on it, and he forged his father's signature. I actually talked to his dad. Oh, I see that the bank marked yes. it stolen, do not present again. Correct. His father called the bank and canceled the check that he forged. Correct. I'm not denying that. So that the rental company did not cash the check. We cashed it, and then we got it back because obviously we can't have that money So they anymore. gave the money back to him? Yes, they had to. Ah, I because see. he did not sign the check. Okay. Jennifer Krill says ex-roommate Christopher Sheets damaged their apartment and her personal belongings. Jennifer claims Christopher punched holes in the walls and ruined her mattress. Mr. Sheets, you're no longer living there, so you don't have to pay the security deposit. Correct. Let's start with that. Don't say correct. I'm okay. giving you a gift here, sir. But you do have to pay for the damage you did to the apartment. Which I had explained to the leasing agent that I would take full responsibility for the Fine. damage that I had done. Good. What did you do? Uh, I had put a hole in the wall. Uh, I had also put a hole in the door in my room. That sounds like a lot more than $300 to me. It was $25 a hole is what I was told by her. You have a bill for the damage that he did to yes, the apartment, I do. please, Miss Krill. And then I also have this. Are you talking to your father now? No, we have not spoken in over a month. $120, Spring Lakes Apartments. That's what you owe for the holes. And then, from your... Oh, well, this, you listen to me. You're going to pay your own security deposit. Okay, I was just giving that to you. That's fair, right? You're yes. there, you pay the security deposit. He's going to pay for the damage you did. Now the place is damage-free. Any other damage you caused while you're there, you pay for. Yes. I'm a reasonable person. <laughs> okay. Now, Miss Krill, you claim that Mr. Sheets damaged some of your property. Yes. Well, um, when I got back to the apartment about 2 in the morning with my friend Katie here, I... Had there been an argument? 
Yes, actually, he called me on the phone, on my cell phone, and he's yelling and screaming at me. What is he yelling? Um, you know, how could you talk crap about me, da 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 She was saying that you were living sort of off of her? Correct. She was taking full advantage of her having the apartment for free and using it against me. Using it against you by House. saying you're living there, you weren't paying enough. Right. I get a rent-free apartment, but I am working 20 hours a week for it, and he pays me $150 a month. Yes. and pays for food and that's not a bargain so you were saying he got a bargain yes and you took offense at that when she uses it against me is when i took how did she use it against you ruining my reputation between friends by talking, saying what Mr. just Schultz? talking trash behind my back it happened several explain? occasions all right now you're not living together anymore come on fill me in uh-huh it's late i have things to do um then well he called me yelling on my phone i went back to my apartment with katie only to find him and his friends throwing things down the stairs there's Mattresses, bed frames, boxes everywhere in the road. Um, one of the neighbors in my apartment his building. Stuff. Yes, his stuff. Um, they called the cops because, you know, they, it was a whole bunch of commotion. And I tried to go confront Chris. I'm like, you know, what's going on? What's happening? He doesn't even want to talk to me. He's like, I'm moving out. That's it. Da, da, da. I'm like, okay, can't stop him. Can you tell me, please, what property you allege that he damaged that belongs to you? He already has to pay $120. He needed on my mattress, which was about $400. Well, how do you know it was him? I have pictures. Just that, that's not my question. How did you know it was him? Well, he was moving out all the stuff with two of his friends, so, I mean, he had the problem with me. Let me see. These are all the pictures. So what you're claiming is it was either Mr. Sheets or one of his friends? Yes. He took all the food in the refrigerator? Yes, uh, everything. Get over it. What else? I got the, the mattress and the holes. I mean, the food, but that wasn't all in right. charge. That's the main things. Let's talk about the mattress, Mr. Sheets. I did not do that, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> I did not see anybody do that. I was out going to get a truck when I came back. Were things being thrown out of the apartment? Your things? My items, yes. Your items? They were getting it out as fast as possible. What time of the day or night was that happening, It Mr. was Sheets? about 2.15 in the morning, I do well, believe. The, sir, so what you're telling me is at 2.15 in the morning in this apartment complex, you're throwing things down the stairs. There are other people that live there, is that right? Correct. That's not very mature, Mr. Sheets. They were moving the things out while I was going to get a vehicle to take all the things to my new... Well, you selected people who were not very mature to do the job, right? Yes. And if you select people that aren't very mature to move you out, and they are acting in an immature, rowdy fashion, whose responsibility is that? Mine. Right on. And while you were out getting a truck to take the stuff out of there that they were throwing down the stairs, you know what else they were doing? They were peeing on her mattress. See, I, we do not know that for sure. You no, know, listen to me, sir. You know why I know that for sure? Because I don't think she peed on her own mattress. <laughs> listen to me very carefully, sir. When you invite people to do a job and you don't supervise them and you do it in an irresponsible manner at 2 o'clock in the morning, you have to assume the responsibility for everything bad that happens. How much was the mattress? About four hundred dollars. What do you mean clothes? about four hundred dollars? My father bought it for me about two years. Yeah, will you ago find spirit. another one for two hundred dollars? Anything else, Miss Krill? Yes, ma'am. He also urinated on about a hundred dollars with my clothes that were laying below my bed. Where are they? They're not with me anymore. I threw them away. Three hundred and twenty dollars. Get over it. That's all. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Why is there you step out? I'm just disappointed in him because he was my good friend and he was immature enough to do that to me and it really hurt my feelings. When she started ruining my reputation is when I had to get involved with it. I'm just happy now that it actually happened because now I know what kind of person he is. Well, I thought we were really good friends at the time. I just don't think we're made out to be... Terrell Taggart claims ex fiance Travis Miller owes for false allegations of assault, money taken from a joint bank account, and his share of wedding expenses. Ms. Taggart, you and Mr. Miller were engaged to be yes, married. You have a child from a previous relationship. Yes, I do. And the three of you live together. Yes. There came a time when that engagement and that relationship terminated. You were in the process of planning a wedding, and it is your claim that Mr. Miller owes you for a whole host of things. First, false allegations that he made with regard to an incident where he claimed that you bit him and assaulted him, emptying out a bank account that was yours, not giving you property back that belonged to you, 
and wedding expenses that you paid for. Mr. Miller says he doesn't know you were dime. He also paid for wedding expenses. He says the allegations of assault were absolutely true. He doesn't have any property that belongs to you anymore, and he really wants you to move on with your life because he says that his life has been made unbearable by you and your family who have embarked on a constant course of harassment, including filing of multiple lawsuits. Yes, so far, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, when did this blissful relationship commence? <laughs> We got engaged on September 16th of 2005. Were you living together at the time? We didn't move in together until the next month. You moved in together in whose home? We rented a, an apartment together and we both signed the lease. And when was this argument that terminated the relationship? The argument happened on May 10th, which was 10 days before the wedding was supposed to happen. Is that when the assault allegedly took place, sir? Approximately, Your Honor. Not approximately? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you want to tell me what happened, Ms. Taggart? Yes, ma'am. Um, I had gone to, um, to Morgan where all of the wedding arrangements were to take place to finalize the, the cake and the um, flowers. And the flowers. I called him at work and told him I was going to be going, and he didn't want me to go. Why didn't you want her to go? Well, because, Your Honor, I wanted to participate in the, you know, the formalizing of this wedding. And he told you that? No, he did not tell me that. What did he tell you? He just told me that he didn't want me to go, and previously he would told me that he didn't want anything to do with planning it, that it was my wedding and I was in charge of planning it. Okay, go ahead. So I went to him, called me several times, and it was very upset. And, well, what um, did he say to you when he called? He would just yell at me. He was mad at me because I, I talked to my mother about how he was upset with me. He didn't want me to even talk to my mother about it. Ms. Taggart, I'm not getting a full picture. After you spoke to him on the phone and he was upset with you, did you call your mother? Yes, ma'am, I did. Why did you call your mother? I called my mother because when I talked to him on the phone, I was very upset and I just wanted to call and mostly have somebody just help me calm down so that I wasn't so upset. I was going to finalize wedding plans and I didn't want to have tears running down my face when I was doing it. Go ahead. Um, I finalized the wedding plans and I called him when I was on my way home as he'd asked. And he said, well, we'll just talk when you get home. And so I got home and my son was asleep. And so I took him to bed in our bedroom. How old is your son? He's seven now. He was six at the time. If he was sleeping, where was he sleeping? He was asleep in the car on the way home. So you went to finalize the wedding plans with your son? Yes. And when you got home, you put your son to bed in your bedroom? Yes. Is that where he usually sleeps? Um, yes. He's, he had a bed in the front room, but he'd often come and slept in our bed. It's not an answer, Ms. Tack. At seven years old, they're supposed to sleep in their own room if they have a room. When he slept in your room, where did he sleep? He, just, he would just sleep in the bed. I laid him in there because I knew that Travis and I were going to be having a conversation and I didn't want it to wake him. So I put him to sleep in our bed. And um, Travis was standing by the bathroom door when I got home. He gave me a hug and I went and I sat on the couch in our front room. And a few minutes later, he came and he sat down in the chair across from me. And he started asking me questions and something about like $1,600 missing from the bank account. And I told him it was just all finalizing wedding plans. Did you have a joint checking account? We did. He, he was put on the checking account two months prior to this. And you were working at the time? Yes. Who were you working for? I was working for the Huntsman Cancer Hospital. And you? Uh, yes, I'm employed for the state of Utah uh, for JGS Juvenile Justice Services. Okay. So you were each depositing your checks in the bank? Yes, In this joint bank account? Okay, go ahead. And so it started to get heated. Um, he started yelling at me about all sorts of things. I remember I was holding a pillow sitting on the couch and he stood over me, shaking his finger at me, telling me that I was weak and I was worthless and he couldn't even believe he was attracted to me. And then he asked me to leave and I was okay with that. At the time, I was, I was fed up with the fight. I was ready to be done with the fight. And so I said, okay, I'll leave. And I went to go back to the bedroom to get my son and Travis had, had been drinking prior in the evening and Travis said you're not taking him with you and I said he's my son and he's going with me and I tried to get past Travis to go get my son and he pushed me and he did this repetitively he pushed me into the wall into the kitchen table into the couch down on the bed down on the floor and I did the, you know did the pushing and shoving match for a minute and then I said you know what I'm just gonna call the cops I grabbed my cell phone and I started to dial 911 and he grabbed my phone and he threw it across the house after that, I went out and I, I was kind of freaked out. I, I stood there for a second and I decided that I had to get my son. And so I started to get violent with him. 
I did bite him on the upper left chest. I believe I bit him on the right forearm. I punched him. I kicked him. I was doing everything I could to get my son out of that house. Why didn't you just go outside and call the police? A moment of confusion. Okay. And so I started to get violent with him. And he said, you're not taking him. He's my son. And I said, you're not to him. And Travis then began to cry. He sat on the floor, and I tried to get past him again to get my son. He then grabbed my legs and threw me to the ground. When I got up again, I started punching him in the top of the head, and I finally got past him. Well, he, he ran into the bedroom following me, and the fight had escalated, and, you know, we were now in the bedroom. I didn't want my son to wake up, and so I laid on top of his ears. I covered his ears so that he wouldn't wake up. All right, Mr. Miller, you want to tell me, please, your version of what happened on the night of May 10th? Yes, Your Honor. While um, Ms. Taggart is emotional, the events could have transpired. You, yes, could you I'll take it. I'd gotten off work around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't drunk. I called to pay my cell phone bill, our cell phone bill, over the phone. And I knew from the day before, because she told me she would like to go do some wedding things, and I asked her, you know, could I go with you? I don't go alone. I said, I got off at 4. Prior to this, I called the cell phone company, and they said, no money in your account. So I got home, and I was a little upset, sober, not drunk. And um, we did have an argument. Her son was sleeping in our room. And if we did have such a horrendous fight, you know, he would have woken up in the first place. She did assault me. I didn't touch her. She could have called the police at any time. I did ask her to leave at that time because she was emotional. And that's about how it transpired, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Taggart. So let me explain something to you. Let's deal with the false allegations of abuse. There were no false allegations of abuse. You lost your cool and you assaulted him. That's it. You bit him. You bit him here, you bit him here, you bit him here. I'm not sure whether I believe that he struck you and abused you because if he did, the police would have arrested him. Did they respond to the, your home? They did not. I actually tried to file a, per, a police report several times within the following weeks. I went to the desk and the, the officer at the desk didn't care. They just shrugged me off. Okay. There were many ways you could have handled the incident that occurred in your house on the 10th of May. You chose the most inappropriate one. Most appropriate one is if you're having a fight with him and if you were emotional, which clearly you were, it's not the right time to take your son out of a sleeping bed. There's no question in my mind that Mr. Miller was not going to hurt your son. So you go outside, you cool off, you call your mother, you call the police if you have to, you say, I want to go get my son. But what you don't do is you don't bite him and kick him and scratch him and punch him and then go inside and put your hands over your son's sleeping ears so that he won't be awake. That's stupid. You agree with that, don't you? No, ma'am, I don't. Well, then that's your problem. <laughs> Because that's the right thing to do if you're a reasonable mother. Your daughter is emotional. He's your daughter, isn't it? Yes. Your daughter is emotional, and the truth of the matter is, on that day, May 10th, based upon what she told me, she did the wrong thing. She went to finalize wedding plans. He asked her not to go to wait for him until he got out of work. She went anyway. There's no question he got upset with her. Instead of resolving the issue, she calls her mommy. Certainly, that's not the way two grown-ups are supposed to deal with their wedding plans. Your daughter got emotional. I don't believe Mr. Miller was drunk. I don't believe that for a minute. So, let's deal with the bank account. You say, Ms. Taggart, that Mr. Miller emptied the bank account. Yes, ma'am, he did. On what date did he empty the bank account? It was the, the day immediately following the fight. It would have been May 11th. How much money was in the bank account? There was probably about... 350-ish. What do you mean 350-ish? Show me the account. I don't know if I have the exact statement for that month. Well, then I'm not interested in that part of the lawsuit, madam. That's what you're supposed to have here. He, um... Ms. I... Taggart, if you come to court and you're suing because you say that he emptied out a joint bank account, what you have to bring is you have to bring proof of that. And that would be the bank statement for when he closed that bank account, how much money was in it, and it would also show me how much money was in it the day before the fight. Yes, ma'am. Do you have that? I only have the bank statements up until April, so I do not have that one. Not interested. Okay, so empty out the bank account you don't have any proof of. Wedding expenses. Who was planning the wedding? I was, as he had told me to. Who was paying for the wedding? I was, out of my income tax return. So? So that is where I come with the opinion that he owes me at least half of that. He doesn't. There has to be an agreement. In the event that... Mr. Miller said to you, which, of course, he didn't, I am going to pay for half of the wedding. Then that's a contract. But Mr. Miller didn't say that to you. What you want is you want half the wedding expenses because there was no wedding. Right? This is right. But that's not the way the law works. There's nothing in the law that gives you the right and gives me the right to say to Mr. Miller, well, it didn't work out, and you should pay for half the expenses. That's a different kind of court. It's a court that doesn't exist in this country. <laughs>
<laughs> now, what property do you allege that you left at his house? Um, there is a mirror that was given to me as a Christmas gift from him. He would not allow me to take it because he said it matched the bed that his father had given us as an early wedding present. There's an anatomy book that I like to refer to for work. It's a very expensive Gray's Anatomy book. Um, just a few little things. I had gone to his house. Not interested in a few little things, madam. I'm waiting. So far, I have a mirror and a book. Um, also, since the bed was given to us as a mutual gift from his father, I believe that I deserve half of the cost of the bed. Got to get over it, Miss Taggart. Got to move on, Miss Taggart. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. Terrell Taggart is accusing her ex fiance of false allegations of assault, stealing money from their bank account, and unpaid wedding expenses. Okay. Did you buy her an anatomy book? I did, Your Honor. Do you have it? No, Your Honor. Where is it? About three days after she had left, my house was burglarized, broken into, coincidentally enough. When you say the house was burglarized, what was taken? Everything from couch, TV stand, television, all appliances, the mirror, blankets, you name it, it was burglarized. Got it. Got it. Okay. Miss Taggart, you have to get over it. Move on. Put your hand down. Don't encourage her. Encourage her to move on. I have encouraged her to Good. move on. Good. Good. Move on. It's over. You find somebody else. Devote all of your energies to something else. It's finished. Case is dismissed. That's all. Party. Linda Banks is suing her neighbor, Herbert Robertson, for accidentally shooting out her windows with a BB gun. Herbert claims he's a better shot than that. Miss Banks, Mr. Robertson is your neighbor, and it is your claim that he shot out some windows in your home with a BB gun. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Robertson, while he acknowledges the fact that he was shooting his BB gun, said that, A, it's impossible for the gun to have pierced the windows of your house, because it would have to go through a bunch of trees, and B, it would be impossible anyway, because he's a very good shot. And he was shooting at squirrels, and he knows that because he's such a good shot, he would not have missed and damaged your property. Those are your two defenses. Is that right, sir? Pretty much. Tell me where I'm wrong. I like to know where I'm wrong. Well, I uh, might miss on occasion. Oh. But, you know, like, I said, we're in front of the big tree, so. Okay. Miss Banks, have you had any trouble with Mr. Robertson before? Yes, I have. With what? Um, about five years ago. Stop playing with that, please. He Distracting is... me, and at my age, nothing should distract me when I'm trying to work. Yes. Approximately five years ago, Your Honor, he installed a pool improperly in his backyard. And that pool ruptured, and the water came down my backyard because he lives here and I live here. And approximately 19,000 gallons of water came into my basement. And what I did was I asked him to come over to survey the damage. He did, and his comment was that it wasn't that bad. But because we're neighbors and I tried to handle it civilly, I settled with his insurance company for $1,200, and there was a lot more damage than that, let alone the time. And I asked him to just help me clean it up, and he refused to do that. This time, when I discovered the damage, I said I wasn't going to let it go. Since the incident five years ago, I assume that the relationship between the two of you has been strained. Yes. What date were you shooting at squirrels, Mr. Robertson, when Miss Banks came over and told you you had damaged her windows? Oh, she never did. Who did? Um, I did. This guy. I mean, I was out in the backyard one day, and uh, he hollers at me and says, you know, you shot my garage window. I said, well, I don't know if I did, but if I did, I'll replace it. He says, don't worry about it. I just wanted you to know about it. And so ever since then, we quit shooting the BB guns. Well, when was this, sir, that you told him he shot out the window? It was the third week of July. His son was out shooting and actually shot over top of my head. How old is your son? Sixteen. You know, don't you know that you could hurt somebody with a BB gun? If you hit somebody, it'd probably sting. Well, if you hit him in the eye, it could blind him. Probably could. If you hit him in the ear, it could make him go deaf. Probably could. So why do you do it? I didn't. No, why do you let your son play with a BB gun? Well, you know, I imagine there's probably uh, 40, 50 kids in that neighborhood got BB guns. I don't give a rat's behind about 40 or 50 kids. I'm asking <laughs> you, why do you let your son shoot a BB gun? Because I don't see anything wrong with it. It's my yard. If he wants to shoot a pop can or something in the backyard, you know, that's no problem. You know, this guy's saying he got one shot over his head. I doubt it. How would you know? Because you can hear it coming through the... You can't hear a BB. 
Mr. Robertson. Yeah, I said, like, when you may I say something? It? Yes. I mean, it's like her talking about the swimming pool. You know, 19,000 gallons of water didn't go in her basement. You know, I did go and survey the damage. It well, didn't look that bad. Went into her basement? My insurance company speaking, took other. I, I, while I'm speaking, you see, you may be able. Is this your wife? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You may be able to interrupt her. Don't interrupt mm. me. No, I was speaking. No, 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 no. But when I start to speak, Mr. Robertson, you have to stop. That's the, right. that's the way we play here okay. in my playpen. That's fine. Good. Can I see the damage to your house, please? Yes, ma'am. I have police reports as well, if you would like to see those. I would. And then also I've included estimates. Good. How many windows? Three windows and then the truck windshield. Well, either you or your son have lousy aim, sir. Would you mind asking this man if, if he did agree, you know, that I told him I'd take care of the window and he said, don't worry about it, so would you be aware of it? Because after that date, we never shot anymore. When you first... Shh, don't answer him. It's like a rock damage to me. No BB did that. Yes. Judge Judy, um, I would like to add, originally, the first incident he did offer to pay. The second incident was August the 11th, the date of the police report. And on the second incident, how many windows were shot out? That's when we discovered the damage of the, uh, the second additional, the bedroom window, and then the truck window. Got it. Still have the BB gun, Mr. Robertson? Yeah. Still let your son use it? Like I said, nobody shot it since he said I shot his garage window out. Well, you don't know that, sir. You do work, don't you? You do no, work. No, I don't. Then. You don't work? No. Why not? I'm disabled. What's the nature of your disability? Back. You I've had five back. back surgeries. Really? How can you shoot a BB gun with a bad back? A BB gun? Yeah, how can you pick up a BB gun? <laughs> well, no, no. How much do you think it weighs? It's kind of hard to shoot. Well, it capacitates. It seems to be if you can do this, you can sit at a desk and answer a phone. Well, I'm just saying, I offered to pay for it. He said, don't worry about it. And that was the end of the shooting. He doesn't want that. you to know. Listen to me. He doesn't want you to worry about it. I want you to pay for it. There's a difference. I offered Should to pay for it. Good. Ask my wife. Oh, I won't. She has to go home with you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so that she has well, my made your mind up. And like I said, you know, I thought you were innocent until you're proven guilty. That's what we just did. No, you didn't. Judging for the plaintiff in the amount of... <laughs> $1,200. Thank you. That's 27-year-old uh, Angela Salura is suing her ex-boyfriend, 24-year-old Freddie Lara, for a loan to restore his Mustang. Freddie claims Angela paid the bill without consulting him. Ms. Salura, it is your claim that the defendant, who is an old boyfriend of yours, owes you some money. Correct. For a loan that you made to him. And the purpose of the loan was to have an old car fixed yes this was a specialty car it's just um it's going to be a classic soon it's just a car i always wanted me to too fix up. <laughs> what kind i clean windows on high on high rises that's a pretty dangerous job yeah how long have you been doing that like seven eight years now make a good living yeah except when they lay you off well you don't do it when it's windy or snowing or raining Right. How much do you make a year? Anywhere from forty-eight to sixty-eight thousand a year. And how many people do you support? Just myself. What kind of car is this that you have? It's a nineteen eighty-six Ford Mustang GT. And your age, sir? Um, twenty-four now. Got a lot of money in the bank? No, unfortunately. Do you own a home? No, I'm working on it. I'm renting an apartment for now. Well, you make a lot of money. What do you do with all your money? It's expensive to live in New York. You don't put any money away? No, I try. Not really. You need a good woman, sir, to help you out. <laughs> you also have a claim for harassment. It is your claim that he's been making harassing yes. phone calls to you, and it's because you believe it's because you confronted his now girlfriend and told her that he was still involved with you. She did not know about the payments. She never knew. He began dating her a week after we broke up, and she just found out about our involvement beginning of January How of this year. How did she find out? She found a text message I, in his phone. Is that right, sir? Yes, sir, because she was harassing. She was harassing for what? Yeah, she was mad about the breakup, so she She mad leave about me alone. the breakup, or did she ask you for money? She was harassing me about everything. Was money involved? Yes. These are not hard questions, sir. Now, Tell me about this loan. We were dating for about a year, 
and within that time he needed some major repair work done on the car it was a car that both of us were using for transportation or rather him um, I don't drive I don't have a license um, so he was driving you around yes I used to live with him and where we live you cannot get around unless you have a car how long did you live together about nine months where were you living at the time in your apartment staying with my mom at the time so how were you living together she where did you live together in his bedroom in his mother's house in his mother's house. just a second in his mother's house so neither one of you were paying any rent I did from a okay, I tried to give them money as much as I, I don't could. tell me tried I'm not interested in your trying so you weren't paying any rent and you weren't paying any rent we were when we could well sir if you make fifty thousand dollars a year it seems to me you could help out with your own rent what does your mother do for a living she's a stay-at-home mom well how does she support herself her boyfriend and she had the two of you living there yes correct Tell me about the loan. Um, he needed some major repair work done on the car. The car was not running, and he asked if he could use my credit card because I don't have any money except for my credit card, and um, he told me he would pay me back. So I lent him the credit card, and um, within that time, he was making payments to me weekly. To you or to the credit card? He was giving them to me, and I was paying the credit card because the credit card was in my name. How much was he giving you? Anywhere from 100 to $200 a week. Tell me when you actually put the bill on your credit card. What was the date? Between June and July, uh, seven transactions were put on the credit card in the amount of about $5,000. I have the... I'd like to see it. Sure. Who had physical possession of the credit card? Card, and there were a few times where I just gave him the card. And I never used the credit card, Your Honor, with the exception of maybe one or two times. It was all of the car repairs. Who has the car now? It's his car. He has it. When did you break up? August 26th of 2006. So shortly after the car was taken yes. care of. Now, Mr. Lara, I read your answer. Your answer says that you had made an arrangement with the place that was fixing your car that you were going to pay them out. Yes. And she took it upon herself to go in with a credit card and pay the bill. But that's not true because there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different times that the credit card was used. And so you must have known about it. Yes. I did. And did you say, don't do it because I'm going to pay them Absolutely. out? Absolutely. I, I insisted Each that time. she didn't do it. Each, Each time. You said, don't do it because I'm going to pay them out. She said it's something we both need, so. <laughs> I believe that. No, I believe that. Listen to me, Mr. Lara. I believe that she said to you, listen, I use the car because she did use the car. So she said, we're both using the car, so I'm going to pay for it. Instead of paying them, pay me. And she says that you were giving her money, Mr. Lara. Yeah, I felt bad. I didn't want her to spend so much. For <laughs> now, you felt bad when you were living together? Yes. Speak up! Yes. Scared to death of me or what? Are you always this low energy, sir? Yes. It's very hard to get excited with you, Mr. Lara. <laughs> Mr. Lara, I want you to pay careful attention to all my words, sir. While you were living together, you felt badly about what she spent on the car, on your car, so you were giving her money. Yes. After you broke up, you stopped feeling badly, so you stopped giving her money. Is that what you're telling she me? She kept on harassing. No, no, no. Don't tell me her. I don't want to hear harassing. I want to hear. While you were living together and using the car together, listen, I want yes. you to follow the logic of this. You were paying her while you were together and using the car together, right? Yes. After you broke up with her and started to see your new girlfriend and she wasn't using the car anymore with you, you didn't feel badly anymore, so you stopped giving her money. Well, I didn't want it to interfere with my relationship. Um, she kept harassing me because things with her, who she was trying to get with, wasn't going well. So I think she's doing me because because of the breakup. I don't give a rat's behind what you think. <laughs> I asked you a very simple question. And you understand my question because I don't think there's total vacancy between your ears, sir. While you were together and both using it, you paid her for laying out the money. When you were no longer together and she wasn't using the car, you stopped paying her. That's what you're telling me. That's objective. Not what you thought, what you felt. But da, 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 da. That's what happened. Doesn't that sound stupid to you? No, because it was a gift. Mr. Lara, I know that you have this word gift in your mind, but what you did in paying her belies the fact that it was a gift, sir. You paid her for the credit card. Hundreds and hundreds of dollars, according to her, because she's only suing you for what she claims is the balance, which is 
$3,400. And the total was close to $5,000 to fix the car. So you paid her a lot of money to pay down the credit card. Do you understand, sir? Yes. Was he more exciting when you were together? <laughs> he had his moments. Few and far between. He has a problem with confrontation, Your Honor. He has a problem with confrontation? Yes. Oh, and I love confrontation. That's why we don't get along. <laughs> Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,400. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. 26-year-old Laura Joza is suing bar patron 22-year-old Jason Witzel for the cost to fix her car. Laura claims Jason body slammed his friend into the vehicle. Ms. Joza, the defendant, you believe, damaged your car while he was drunk in a parking lot of a bar. Your car at that time had been driven to work by your boyfriend. Is this the boyfriend? Right. You were not present when this happened. I was not. Were you present? Yes, I was. Step up, please. On what date did this incident happen with her car? It was 1 o'clock in the morning on uh, March 4th. What's the name of the bar where you work? It's called Little Pedro's. It's what do you on, do uh, there? I work the front door, and my car was basically parked about 20 feet away from me. Her car? Or it's, we live it's together. It's our car. It's registered it's in registered. my name, but our car. It's titled in your name? It is. And you are not married? We, well... We've been living together seven years, kind of. I don't know if that so makes it. It doesn't make it. No, well, by my standards, but yeah, anyway, go ahead. It doesn't make it. So it's your car. My car. Tell me what you observed, sir. Well, basically what happened, he uh, came out of the club, and um, as he came out, I can kind of tell him and his friends were a little riled up. I guess having a good time, but a little agitated for some reason. They walked down the way, and they actually were right in the side of my car. And all of a sudden, they just escalated into them wrestling each other. And at that moment, when I seen him wrestling, I was starting to walk over there. And as soon as I started going out of the door to go over there, they, he grabbed his friend that he was wrestling and slammed him into my vehicle. So I ran over there. As I was grabbing him, he swung, missed me, struck his friend right in the nose, was bleeding all over the place. And then I told him, you know, they're not coming into the club, that they're done. You guys definitely are over it. But uh, about 10, 15 minutes later, I guess I was still adrenaline rushed at the time. I didn't notice that my car was damaged, and I looked, and I could see it in the light reflecting off the side of the vehicle that it was damaged right where they fell into it. So then I looked well, around. Well, they didn't fall into it. According to you, Mr. Witzel body slammed his he basically, friend he, he into the car. He slammed his friend into the car, and his friend fell with his back onto the vehicle, and they both collided into the car with both of their spores. Got it. Okay. And then what happened after that, he said he was going to be compliant with it. We filled out an incident report from the club that he signed stating what happened, you know, what time, and Can all I see this. it, please? Sure. We also have pictures of the damage, if you'd like that. I would. Also have the insurance information that he gave us. That was actually another kind of a weird thing, insurance card, that he stated that it was his insurance, but it was actually just his AAA service. It's, he I can't have insurance for this. Yeah, I know, they but that's... don't insurance for this. This incident report indicates that Jason, that would be you, is yeah. that right? was so drunk he couldn't even write his name or number. So, let me hear you. Well, I was already kind of kicked out of the bar because I had too much to drink. Yeah. And I was sitting outside waiting for my friends. Yeah. And there was probably maybe like 50 to 60 people outside. Yeah. And where he was from where his car was, he couldn't have seen what happened. How do you know what he saw, sir? You were drunk. Because he was standing inside of the door. I was not inside just the door. A, Don't speak. I yeah. mean, I, I did walk into the place. I saw where he was when he was, you know, taking ideas Jason, and whatnot. two things. There is a signed acknowledgement of responsibility right. that you signed. Right. Now, you say that you were too drunk to know anything about what you signed. That's uh -huh. your defense to that. Is that right? Yeah. And yet you're telling me you were not drunk enough. Well, so, listen, let me finish. You were too drunk to know what you signed, but not so drunk as to be able to tell me that he couldn't have seen what he says he saw. Okay, but the, the, the times are completely different. I was, I was waiting outside for like 45 minutes before he even came up to me. They didn't let me back in. I had to ask him if I could get my friends to leave. And then I probably waited outside like another 30, 45 minutes before he let me back in. And then when we were walking out to leave is when he pulled me aside and said he was looking for me because something happened to his car. At that right. point, I didn't know what was going on. I knew nothing about the car. I don't even think he knew about the car. I think someone told him and he saw us fighting. And it was like, oh, it's, they were probably close to it. They might as well have done it. When there were so many people out there that were walking by, anyone could have done it. Well, that's true, but he says you did it. 
And you're too drunk to know what you did. Well, of course, I'm drunk. He sees a really drunk guy signing a, a thing that I'm too drunk to sign. It's do you know, easy. Do you know, Jason, what that would suggest to me? What? That a good life's lesson is if you're going to drink, don't drink too much. Because if you drink too much, you really can't tell what kind of dumb thing you might do. Or you can't really defend yourself when somebody says that you did something that you say you didn't do. Do you follow that? Yeah, I follow that. So that would be a good lesson. Go to college? Uh, no, I'm in the Navy. Is that where you learned how to drink? Uh, not necessarily. Because you don't drink well, sir. Well, maybe it was a long night of drinking. Was there any reason for that? I don't know. You start off with a few and then, I don't know, you end up having more than you expected. That sounds stupid. <laughs> at the you know, at the time, I guess it didn't. But it does sound stupid, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds Because now you're going to have to fix a car. What kind of car is it? It's a 2005 Cadillac CTS, so it's an expensive car, which is in pristine condition. It's not like I had something on it before or, you know, it's a perfect car. I have a question, too, for him. Since he says now that, you know, he didn't do it, it could have been anybody. So since we had contact with him days afterward and everything was fine, oh, yeah, we'll take care of it. Take it to my place over here. Those days you were sober, so that doesn't make any sense that, oh, you were too drunk at that, you know, that day. But then days afterward, you didn't say you didn't do it. This is the first that we hear that it could have been 50 or 60 people that did it. But it could have, he told me it was his car, now all of a sudden it's her car. That is my Just a second. What difference does that make to you? Well, the, <laughs> all right, after the whole incident, it got kind of fishy, you know? He called me like... Listen, I, I don't want to hear you anymore. Okay. I, quite frankly, when a 22-year-old gets so drunk that they don't know what they're doing, it makes me nauseous. I want to gag. My gag reflex is <laughs> in. You owe her $500. Judgment for the plaintiff. All right. That's all. Thank you. Housekeeper Nita Bayer is suing former employer Kendra Hall for damages resulting from an injury she sustained in Kendra's home. Kendra is countersuing for the return of Nita's unearned wages. Miss Bear, according to what I read in your complaint, you did some housework for Miss Hall. You fell in her house. You want her to be responsible for your medical bills and your lost wages. Miss Hall says she's not certain that you fell in her house and injured yourself there. She's counterclaiming because she says that she paid you for an entire month you only worked that one day. She wants you to refund her the amount that she paid you for the remainder of the month when you didn't work. I have a few questions. Ms. Bayer, how long did you work for Ms. Hall? Um, seven months. How often did you go to her home? Every Friday starting of March 2006. How many hours did you spend there? Usually I spent somewhere between seven and eight hours a day. What was the date of this accident in the house? It was November 3rd, 2006. And she had paid you for the month? Yes, she did. What was your monthly salary? It was 360 I received $90 a week. Now tell me about this fall that you took in the house. Miss Hall was not at home. That's right. Go ahead. I arrived to work and I started working in the kitchen. Then I went upstairs, stripped the beds, made the beds. And then I took all the laundry down to the laundry room. And the light bulb was burned out in the laundry room. So I went into the garage to look for a ladder, and I found a three-foot ladder. I came, I took down the fixture, which was full of bugs and dirty. I washed it, cleaned it, went upstairs, got light bulbs that are kept upstairs in the linen closet. When I came down, I went up the three-step ladder, went to put the bulb in, and lost my balance and fell against the wash and dryer on my left side. When I got up, I felt nauseous and, and uh, dizzy. So I went outside and sat in a little brick fence that's in the backyard, trying to gain my composure. And then I finally went into the house. I took some Aleve, some Excedrin. Stop one second. So it would be clear and fair to say that you did not fall because the ladder broke? No. Because there was any imperfection in the floor? You fell because you lost your balance? That's right. Nobody else's fault but yours? That's right. Okay. Bye. So um, since she pays me monthly, $360, she had just left that check that morning, and I never thought anything was really seriously wrong with me, and I tried to continue to work. In fact, I did continue. I finished cleaning the house, even did the laundry, very slow. Usually I leave about 3 or 4 in the afternoon. She arrived about 5 o'clock, and she asked me, are you still here? And I said, yes, I did something foolish today. I fell and I hurt my arm. I don't know what's the matter. It really, really hurts. 
She quickly ran to the phone, called her sister-in-law, who I also work for, and she said, Nita fell changing a light bulb. Do you think my home insurance will cover her if I take her to the doctor? She said, okay, thank you, hung up, ran to her office, came back with some papers and said, yes, my home insurance does cover it, but I have to pay a $1,000 deductible, of which I will not pay. And suddenly she wasn't concerned about me anymore. And she says, this is ridiculous. And I said, well, then you're not going to help me. And she says... So you had asked her? Yes. Just a second. You didn't make that clear, Miss Bayer. I'm sorry. So you said to her, I finished working, but I hurt my shoulder. I want to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Will you pay for it? I didn't say, will you pay for it? I asked her, can you do, help me? That's what I said. Well, what did you want her to do to help To you? take to the doctor. I figured, well, since I fell in her home, that... You, so you felt she was responsible. That's right. Well, that's what I'm saying to you, Miss Bayer, but you left that out of your story. What you made it sound like was you told her that your shoulder was hurting. Without saying another word, she went over to the phone and called her sister-in-law. Yes. But that's not what happened. You said, I want to go to the doctor. Can you help me? Because you're responsible because I fell in your house. So she went to find out if that was true. And, and she came back and okay. found out that it was true. What makes you think that if you have an accident in somebody else's home and it's your fault that they should be responsible? Because I was under her employment at the time. Well, that may be. But, you know, there is something that lacks common sense about that. I'm a common sense gal myself. What you told me was you fell and it was your fault. Yes. And you want somebody else to pay for it. That's what it comes down to. I and mean, if you're taking it at, its, at face value, you may have fallen in her house. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not necessarily saying that Miss Hall should not have.